Good day, everyone. Neophyte DAG bringing you another message. And this message is called, Why am I called a Negro? I meant Necro. Title doesn't make sense. But once we go through this, you'll understand why the title is what it is. Let's start out by finding the definition, the meaning of the word Negro based on his story. Not your story, his story. Negroes, a member of a race of humankind native to Africa and classified according to the physical feature such as dark skin pigmentation, meaning dark skin complexion. Now, let's see the genesis of this word, Negro. According to his story, it was first used in 1555, and it came from the Spanish word or Portuguese word, Negro, which means black, and from the Latin, and you can see that word Latin, Niger, you add another G to it, you get that word, nigger. So that's where that word comes from, just to give you sort of a spoiler alert on another word and the genesis of it. Let's get back to Negro. So these are the two characteristics. They're from Africa, and their physical description is dark skin complexion. The word started out in 1555. That's what his story is saying. Now, in order to understand the story of the Negro, you have to understand the story of Noah's three sons, Ham, Japheth, Shem. They're not in order. I just ordered them that way because we're going to go through each of them very quickly so you can understand who the Negro is. And we're going to get the information from these two sources, the Zondervan Pictorial Bible and the Pseudepigrapha, the Old Testament Pseudepigrapha. This is the book that contained the missing books of the Bible. So in case you're wondering, what is that thing? Yes, the Bible that you have now, the Holy Bible, the conventional Bible is missing a lot of books. Now these books have come back to us in the form of the Pseudepigrapha. The Most High has released that information to his chosen people, the Negroes. Let's start with Ham. And this is what it says. Ham is the youngest son of Noah. And he became the progenitor of the dark race, not the Negroes. So Ham, he's a progenitor, which means he's the forefather of a particular race of people, the forefather of the dark race that are not Negroes. So this is telling us clearly that Ham isn't Negro. And this is coming from the Zondervan Pictorial Bible. Ham now is part of Africa. He's claiming now his story. He's Egyptian, he's Ethiopian, he's Libyan, he's Canaanite, all sorts of different things. But Ham, based on the story, the true story of Noah, is of Africa. But we'll figure out what part of Africa they're talking about. But he's not the Negro. That's a part that I want you to understand. Now, why is Ham not the Negro? I mean, let's try to get a, get a picture of Ham should be a Negro. He's dark skinned and he's from Africa. So why isn't he not a member of the Negro race? Why pulling that out? So if he's not, then there's someone else of Noah's son who is the Negro since Ham isn't. So let's dig a little further. Ham, dark skin, the description, the definition of Negro, Dark skin again. Ham is from Africa. The definition of Negro is a person from Africa. So listen, it seems as if we have multiple Africas working here because Ham is from Africa. He's black, but he's not being defined as a Negro. So that means there's someone else from Africa who's black, who's a Negro, or someone else who they have claimed to be from Africa, who's not really from Africa or only from Africa, and is of dark skin complexion. We'll get into that some more. I'm just giving you teasers and thoughts to think for you to think about in the meantime. Now, we've covered this already. Why is Ham not the Negro, even though he has a physical feature of a Negro? He's native to Africa. So 
Obviously, the definition that we're given is not accurate. The definition based on the dictionary, Webster's Dictionary, which says anyone who's from Africa, native to Africa, dark skin, is a Negro. That's not accurate because Ham isn't a Negro and he has those two features. Let's go on some more because, again, we have to dig to see who this Negro is. We'll cover Japheth. He's the older son of Noah. He's older than Shem. Shem is the other son. And Japheth now, he's a progenitor. He's a forefather of the race of people that lives in the remote northeastern section of Europe. Forget about the north, southeastern. There's no such description for Japheth. Once you know the true history of Japheth, Japhets are what we call the Caucasian now. Their original place that was given to them was northeastern Europe. So we'll stop right there for Japheth. We'll dig into that later on as well. Now, this is more information on Japheth. If you go to the book, The Creed of Japheth by Alexander William, you'll see the description on page 346 and 347 given of what the Japhetites look like. It says the Japhetans preserve the blue eyes and fair complexion of their ancestors. So we know the Japhetans are fair skin, which is what we call in our modern day time Caucasian complexions and they have blue eyes, just like their ancestors of the original Japhetites. So the Japhetites are white. So they can't be the Negroes now because the Negro has to be dark skin and from Africa. The Japhetites are Caucasian, fair skin, pale skin, which we call in our modern day time, white people that live or come from the northeastern portion of Europe. So we X out Japhet as the Negro, which brings us to Shem. Now Shem, the son of Noah, is the progenitor of the Semitic race. And usually we'll stop there. We see Semitic, we're like, whoa, what is that? I don't really know what it is. Let's move on. But now we're not going to move on this time. We're going to figure out what the Semitic is. We'll go to this book, The Races of Europe, a sociological study by William Z. Ripley. And William is an assistant professor of sociology at MIT, Massachusetts Institute of Technology, and he's a lecturer of anthropology at Columbia University in New York. So what I'm trying to let you see is that the people with the scholastic uh, backgrounds, they know these things that I'm about to tell you, but it's just not shared with you. So let's look at this. We're going to go with the highlighted section and we're going to cover two types of people, which are the same people we're talking about. The English Jews are slightly lighter than the Sephardic Jews, meaning they're Jews that were living in England, Ireland, Scotland, and Wales. And they're also the Sephardic Jews that were living in Spain and Portugal. The English versions were a little bit lighter because there's less sunlight in those zones as it was in Spain, Portugal, and North Africa. The Sephardics, who are supposedly peculiar dark, meaning they're very dark. So the English Jews are lighter, slightly lighter, their brown skin complexion in our modern day term compared to the Sephardics, which are very dark. Let's jump down some more to the Semites. We just covered Semites. That the Shem race are the Semitic people, the Semites. Semitics are dark enough in type. They're dark-skinned people. Evidence of the sacred books bears out the same theory. So the, the sacred books tells the same thing that is about to be spoken of, that they're dark-skinned. They are the original dark type, thus black. So the Semites are black people. This is what that's saying. There's no way around this. And this is what the people who have the knowledge know, but you don't know. Let's read on further. Science corroborates this, what they're saying. They have done the studies to verify what William Ripley is telling in this book. 
popular impression that the modern Jews are distinctively of brunette type. And just for the convenience, I have brunette definition at the bottom. Brown. A woman with a brown or dark complexion brings us back to the same thing. The Jews, the real Jews, and the Sephardic Jews, which are the Jews that were of Northern Africa, Spain, and Portugal, were dark-skinned people, which belong to the Semitic race, which are also dark-skinned people. Can't get any clearer. So Shem is dark skin and E is Semitic and E is the Jewish people. Not the ones that you're told now are the Jews. That's the Ashkenazi Jews, which are of the tribe of Japhetites. Let's keep that in mind. We'll go to another book. This is a, an esoteric book. Adam and the Pre-Adamites by Dr. Doriel, where he, gave, he goes into explanation as to who is Adam and who are the Semitic people. Adam was the father of what we call today the Semitic people. So Adam is dark skin. He's the original dark skin types of people that was then handed down further and called the Semitic people. Adam was a generic term that meant not one man, as we're told in our biblical interpretation by those who don't want you to know this. They've, made, they've gone to extreme length to let you think Adam is one man, but it's not. It's a race of people, but a race of men which was reddish in color. They're the red-skinned people. That's the Adamites. They're called ruddy complexion. If you go through the Bible, you'll see ruddy all over it. Just do a search if you have one of the electronic Bible for ruddy, and you'll see ruddy popping up all over the place. And that ruddy original complexion people in our modern-day races of man is the brown race. The brown race was derived from the original root race of red people, the red skin. If you want an idea of the red skin now, look at some of the native American Indians. They are red skin. They're called red man, red skin man. So that's what the original would look like of a ruddy complexion red skin. We'll go a little further because we're covering Semitic people and Jew because they're the same. So let's look at another book by Dr. Doriel. It's called the Messiah Agadath. The Jewish people are made up of 12 tribes, 12 tribes of Israel. We've all heard about that, but what is Israel now? Israel means mankind, and it does not mean the Jewish race only. So the Jewish race consisted of only one tribe, and the Jewish people are dark-skinned, dark-haired, dark-eyed people. They are of the brown race. Semites, the Jewish, are dark-skinned people, brown race people. They're not the white skin. In our modern day term, white skin, but it's really Caucasian skin people. They're not those people. They're of the dark skin people that were of the lineage of Shem. So hopefully I've made that clear to you and cleared up that confusion that in the scholarly sources, it says it bears out the same thing, that the Semite people are dark skin, the Jewish people are dark skin, and then in the esoteric world of it, it's saying the same thing. So I've given you two sources, which comes back to the same thing. So now let's go back to the Bible for a second and see now where the Shemites, the Japhetites, and the Hamites are located based on the way Noah and the Lord had allocated the earth to these three different brothers at the time subsequent or after the flood. We go to the book of Jubilees, chapter 8, and we'll start with verse 12. And everything which is towards the north of the world belongs to Japheth. So Japheth is north. 
Everything which is towards the south, immediately south of Japheth, is belonging to Shem. And then we jump to the same chapter 8, verse 29. This is the land which came to Japheth and to his son as the portion of his inheritance, which he will possess for himself and for his sons for generation forever. So that's where Japheth owns or was given as his right to occupy those lands and for his sons for all generation. Only that place that was given to Japheth. The five great islands and the great land in the north of the planet of the world. So the northern region, five islands to the north, meaning the North Pole region, and North Europe was given to Japhetites and all his descendants. That's where the Caucasian race originally resided, came from, and that's their land which they should have kept until the end time and not move over into other lands that were allotted to Shem and Ham. But here is the caveat, though, to Japheth's land. But it is cold. It's always cold. His land is cold. And the land of Ham is hot. It's always hot. That's in verse 30. But the land of Shem is not hot or cold because it's a mixed with cold and heat. So the land of Shem is where you get the four seasons. It's not hot all year round. It's not cold all year round, but it has seasons. It have seasons of heat, seasons in between, and then seasons of cold, but not extremely cold. So that's how the planet, the world, was divvied up between the three suns. Let's take a look at what this division is. So that's where the Japhetites at the top, always cold, and the five islands. So you had northern, eastern Europe, which is the top portion of Russia, always cold, and those five islands, the big island Greenland, for example and all the other islands which are moving up to the North Pole. Shem in the middle, if you look, you notice in the middle of the planet of this world, it has the seasonal. So that's where Shem got the red skin and the dark skin race. And you see Ham now got south, portion of the African continent, and then the southern portion of the Americas. So Shem got the middle. So now, if you bring this now to your current time, who is in a part of the world that was not allotted to that line of people? Caucasian at the top, dark skin in the middle, dark skin in the southern portion. Is Japhetites in the middle of this world right now? Yes. Is Japhetite in the southern portion of the world right now? Yes. So obviously there is violation of the agreement that was made where everyone got their portion of the world and he or she and his ancestors should not invade or take the other portion that was not lotted to them. But we'll come back to that in a minute. So conclusion from this, who is the Negro? If of Noah's three sons, Ham, black, not the Negro, that was told to us by their interpretation of who Ham was. Japhetite, they're white, what we call Caucasian in our time, they're definitely not the Negro based on his definition of the Negro, he's not dark-skinned, so he can't be the Negro. So then conclusively and by default, Shem must be the Negro, and we have proven that, that he's dark-skinned and he's of Africa, because if we go back to the map, we see that Shem got the northern portion of Africa, which included Egypt. So yes, Shem, 
does fit that description, that he's African, he's dark skin complexion, therefore he's a Negro, but the catch, keep in mind, he's not only from Africa, not at all, not by any chance, which is what now I break out here to you. I'm redefining the definition given in the Webster Dictionary to be more accurate according to the Bible. A Negro, Shem, is a member of a race of humans native to Central Europe, Western Europe, North Asia, Central Asia, North Africa, North America, and Central America, and is classified according to physical features as dark skin complexion. That is the definition of a Negro according to the Bible, but it's not the full and complete definition. I'm just debunking his story and giving to you the biblical story, the book of truth, because if you're going to worship the Most High or be a spiritual person, you have to worship in spirit and in truth. So you have to know the truth about who you are and who you not are. Let's move on to that strange word that I gave you at the beginning, the new word in your vocabulary, necro, and its meaning according to his story. So, as seen here, the meaning of necro, those that are dead. One that is dead. And this word is borrowed from the Greek, and it's talking about dead in spirit. You are spiritually dead. Uh, give that a moment to sink in, just to see if that description fits anyone or yourself or any other or particular type of race of people in our modern day time, because the Negro has to continue to exist in our modern day time until the Negro is set free, raised up from the dead by the Most High and given knowledge of who the Negro, who he is, what his role and her role in our modern day time. So let's move on now to tell you how the word Negro came up. If you take Necro, you replace the C with a G, you get the word Negro. So Negro is a substitution in our modern day, his story for the word Necro, which is written and tied into the spiritual description of who the Shemites, the dark-skinned people, are in our modern-day time. They are the Necros, but it changed in the history book to Negros, but it's really talking about the same person, a Necro. Let's proof this out with the Bible. Bible is always a book of truth once you know how to properly interpret it. Luke 15, verse 24. This is taken directly from the, son, the story of the prodigal son, which is talking about the relationship between Shem and Japheth. That's what the prodigal son is about. The, the, the father had two sons. It's talking about Noah and his two sons, which the two sons which have a rocky relationship which leads up to our current time, where one son is going to enslave another son, put him in the fields to work, and reduce him to nothing. And then at the end, the Most High will come back and bless that son that was put under bondage, the son is Shem, and put the ring on his finger, giving him his social uh, power back put the robe on him, which is his right hand, giving him his rulership, his leadership back, and put shoes on his feet, which is giving him back his economic wealth. So that's what's going to happen to Shem. But I won't go too much into that. 
I've covered that in other messages. But Luke 15, verse 24, For this my son, Shem, was dead and is alive again. So that's what the Most High will be saying later on when Shem, the Negroes, have been risen from the dead by the Most High, been given back their spiritual consciousness, and they're alive again. So the Bible is proofing out the term those that are dead. My son Shem was dead and is alive again. Not convinced? Let's go to James 2 verse 26. For as the body without the spirit is dead, so faith without works is also dead. So the body without a spirit is dead. If you're not spiritually connected, spiritually conscious, you are dead. You're absolutely dead. And that's a state that Shem, the dark-skinned people, which occupied or used to occupy most of the center of the planet, was put into. They became spiritually dead. If you go back to the story of the prodigal son, the Japhetites made the Shemites spiritually dead. Proof? You weren't allowed to read if you were a dark-skinned complexion when slavery was running rampant. If you were caught with a book as a dark-skinned person, you would be killed. It's automatic death penalty. You weren't allowed to go to school, weren't allowed to worship, weren't allowed to congregate, weren't allowed to sing, weren't allowed to play drums, weren't allowed to understand anything about yourself with the exception of what the so-called masters tell you and then what the church, the Christianity, told you, which is not accurate, which is all lies. So basically you were spiritually dead. Let's find the other meaning of dead. Proverbs 21, verse 16. The man that wandereth out of the way of understanding shall remain in the congregation, the people of the dead. So you have no understanding as to who you are spiritually, and you don't even know who you are physically. You were taken from many different lands that were in the middle of the planet, not just North Africa. You were taken out of Europe, Central Europe, Western Europe, and you were taken out of North America and Central America. And you have no understanding as to who you are spiritually and understanding of anything about yourself. Let's go to 2 Ezra 10, verse 30. It talks about the same thing. And lo, I lay as one that had been dead, and mine understanding was taken from me. You have no understanding, therefore you shall be dead. You're considered dead. And just to read further, this is a little extra which ties us back to the prodigal son story. And he, who is he? The Most High and the Lord both took me by the right hand. That's where you got the robe and comforted me and set me upon my feet. What is feet? Your feet is your economic wealth. So it's telling the same story. You are the cross, your head, your two hands, your feet, and the center of your chest. You are the cross if you extend your hands outward. Your head is your moral connection to the Most Eye. That's where your pineal resides. That's your connective area to the Most Eye. Your right hand, that's your political. It says subdue and make that subdued work for you in the best spiritual and righteous way. Your left hand, multiply. That's your community. That's your social gathering. Multiply the amount of righteous people that is part of your nation. And then your feet, 
everything economic come from the earth. That's where your economics is going to come from, your wealth. Use the earth to provide your wealth and replenish it after you use it. Don't just use it up and don't put back anything. And then the center of it, which is where most of us are having trouble with, Genesis 1 verse 29, trees, herbs, fruits with a seed shall be your meat. So the five things I just described to you is in Genesis 1 verse 28 and Genesis 1 verse 29. That's what is called the five divine laws that Shem has to obey. It was, those laws were said directly by God. Genesis 1 verse 28, it says, God said. Genesis 1 verse 29, it says, God said. Not someone else said. God said. So those are the commandments of the Most High, the five divine law. If you want to equate it to our term, modern day time, it's the Egyptian Ankh. It is also the cross, which the church has taken over and made into something other than what it is, but is telling you, you are the cross. Which brings me to this question, how did you become a necro? I meant dead. We'll look for the answer the way the Bible gave it to us. And in order to know the answer, we'll go to Judges 16, verse 17, 18, and 19. But we'll look at 17 and 19 first. And this is a story about Samson and Delilah. Once you know who the players are, you'll know to interpret the story better. So to give you a framework, Samson is Shem, Delilah is Japheth. And you can equate it for any other conflicting characters in the Bible, such as Adam and Eve, in our modern day time, blacks and white. So here's a story, and I won't go, go through all of it. You can read it on your own. I want to jump you to 19 to show you exactly how you lost your spiritual connection and you became dead. Don't overlook this verse. It's a very serious verse. And she, Delilah, Japheth, made Samson sleep on her knees. And she called for a man. If you know who the man is, that's the Dagon, the dragon, the reptilian character, and his hybrids. That's the man. And she caused that man to shave off the seven locks of Samson's head. Didn't say shave off his hair or all his locks. It said seven. So that's the significance. The seven means your seven spiritual channels that connect you back to the Most High, your seven chakra, your seven fourth dimension channels, and your seven hermetic principles, which gives you the laws of how to connect those chakra from the third dimension to higher dimension. So those seven locks off his head were shaved off Generally, in the literal story that you're given through church interpretation, family and friends, that his whole hair was cut off. No one stopped to look at seven locks of his head. I keep repeating that. Seven locks of his head were cut off. And that's when they begin to afflict Samson because now he was weak. And it says his vital force, his strength went from him. That's what happened to Samson. If you go back to 17, that's where Samson is telling Delilah, where the black race is telling the Caucasian race, where Shem is telling Japheth, where Adam is telling the Evites that, hey, my strength will go from me and I shall become weak and be like other man. He shall become spiritually and physically dead. That's what he meant by weak. So this is how you became spiritually dead, where our secret was told to another race and that other race called in and joined themselves with other forces, demonic forces, reptilian forces, and caused you to lose connection to your seven locks that's in your head, your seven chakra, 
your fourth dimension channel, your seventh principle of, of how to connect those first two. That's what happened. How do I know you were sold out? Let's go to Judges 16, verse 18. And it says, and when Delilah, and you can place who you want to place in that, when Japheth saw that he, who is he, Shem, had told him all his heart, he went and called the false lords. And the Philistine, the Philistines is a description for the ungodly. So the ungodly, the hybrids, the reptilians, whatever name you want to add to them, they were summoned and given your secret, and they came in and cut your connection to your seven locks. Eve said, come up this once, for Samson had told me his secret. He had showed me all his secret. Then the reptilian, the ungodly, the false leaders of the ungodly came up to her, unto Eve, Japheth, whichever name you want to add to it. It's all the same characters that's being talked about throughout the entire Bible and brought money in their hands. So the money was given unto the one that turned over the secret of the Shemites, the Blacks, the Adamites, the Luz, the Saints, the Elects, and caused those same people, those names, they're all the same. It's one person with different names to be cut off from their seven locks. And that's how you became dead. The stories all over the Bible in different books, but I make sure I give you a story that you're familiar with, that Samson's hair was cut off. It's not his hair, it's his seven spiritual connection that he has with the most eye, one through his chakra, then there are some channels within you that's called the fourth dimensional channel that also gives you that connection to the most eye. And then the principle of how to operate those energies are given in the seven hermetic principle. Those are the seven universal principles, mentalism, correspondence, vibration, polarity, rhythm, cause and effect, and gender. Which brings us now to the book of Jubilees chapter 9. This is the not so friendly part of the relationship between Japhetites, Hamites, and the Shemites. Because this is where a curse was placed by the sons of Noah, because Noah said you have to make a promise, an oath, and if you break the oath, the curse will be upon you. So let's read verse 14. And Noah made all three sons swear an oath to curse each of the son and everyone who desired to seize, to take by force a portion of the land which was not given to him. So again, it goes back to my question. Who's on land that was not given at the time when Noah made the oath among the sons? Because the sons are supposed to abide by this for all generation, not just until Noah is dead. Then it's, you know, everything goes for everyone. Nope. You have to abide by it. So the sons are going to have to take the responsibilities that their forefathers broke. There's no way out of this one, people. There's no way out of it, which brings us to 15. And they all said, so be it and so let it be to them and their sons forever in their generation. So forever, the time now is part of forever until the day of judgment, which is the time right, right now, Aquarius, that's when the judgment starts, which is starts in the year 2000, and it's going to run until the children of Shem have gotten back their land and have gotten back their wealth and have gotten back their community, their social power, and have gotten back their political power and have changed their diet and appetite to trees, herbs, leaves, seeded fruits, 
as their meat. So until the day of judgment in which the Lord will judge all the sons with a sword, meaning with a wrath, with rulership, with leadership, he's going to judge, and with fire, meaning destructions. So whoever is not in their land that they're supposed to be in and has filled themselves up with sins that they've placed in those lands, they're going to have to face up to this judgment with the sword and with fire. So if you're confused about what's happening right now in our modern day time, don't be confused. It's verse 15 playing itself out where there are the Japhetites in North America and Central America. They shouldn't be there. They're also in Ham's territory in South Africa, and they're also in South America. And they're going to get this judgment by sword, war, and fire, destruction, until they have cleaned themselves or cleared themselves and their sins off the land. Let's dig some more into the dead. Now the dead is not, will be redeemed. They're going to be resurrected and they're going to be given back what's theirs, eternal life. Let's go to Acts 26, verse 8. Why should it be thought of as incredible, unbelievable? Why should you not believe that the Most High, working through the Lord Thoth, should raise the dead? He's going to raise you. He's going to raise the Shemites. Also the Hamites were dead, and also the Japhetites were dead, but want to now cleave on to the Most High uh, and the Lord chosen people, the Shemites. They will be raised. Dead, spiritually unconscious, without understanding, we have covered that. Let's look at John 5, verse 25. Verily I say unto you, the time is coming, and the time is now, when the spiritually unconscious and without understanding shall hear the voice of the Son of God, which is the Most High's messenger. And when it says Son, it meaning S-U-N, the Most High's real Son, true Son, is though the Lord. And they shall hear, and when they hear that voice, they shall be alive, they shall live, they shall get spiritually conscious, get understanding, and get eternal life. Let's move on, because I'm showing you the Shemites shall be redeemed regardless of what the Japhetites and those who are ruling the Japhetites, the serpents, the hybrids, and all the other demonic forces that have been called upon to keep the Japhetites in power. They won't be able to stop this. Psalms 88, verse 10. Will thou show wonders? That's what's being asked of the Most High and the Lord, though. Will thou show your wonders to the dead, the spiritually unconscious, that those without understanding? Shall the dead be risen and to praise you after they have been risen? Sila. That's what it's saying. The dead... Now, they're going to get that spiritual consciousness. They're going to get understanding, which we are getting now. We're falling into that right now. And we're going to end up praising the true Lord until we, once we get that picture of who the true Lord is, we're going to sing that praise. But for now, praise who you want to praise. But in time, you'll get to know who the true Lord is. Second Ezra's. 2 verse 16, and those, which is talking about you, children of Israel, which is really Lewis, not Israel over in the Mideast, which they have made up. The Lewes, the Jews, we have established who the Jews are, the blacks. And the blacks that be dead, spiritually unconscious without understanding, Will the Lord raise up again from their places? Where are you placed now? Poverty, ghettos, affliction, servitude, involuntary slavery, 
because you're working, you can't make ends meet, and all you have to do is go back to work to make money again, to be back in poverty again, and destroying yourself voluntarily and involuntarily with all the destructive things that have been placed around us. And bring them out of their spiritual death and out of their lack of knowledge. For I, the Lord Thoth, have known by my name, the glory and pride in my name. These are the people that represent me and represent my name. They are the Lewis, which is Israel is a code word for Lewis. The Lewis, if you take the I-S off, which is converted now in modern day time, they change the L to J and get the Jew, which are all talking about the blacks. And then if you want to dig further into Israel, Israel mean mankind. But the ones that will be leading the mankind are the blacks. There will be other races in mankind. It's not about just one race. It's about the most I chosen people. But they're not the only one who are to get this eternal life. Israel is mankind. All those who are righteous and want to cleave on to the most eyes, chosen people, the blacks. Last one we'll cover, because this one is very important, Ezekiel 37, 12, which is what most of the most eyes prophets right now have been prophesying, myself and the most eye number one prophet, which is the minister, Louis J. Armstrong. Therefore prophesy and say unto them, that's the children of Israel, thus sayest the Lord, thoth, netta, God is a Greek, it's a Greek word. The Egyptian word which they took it from was netta, so that's why I have netta there. Behold, thoth and the most die righteous people, the seed, the elects, the chosen, I will awaken Open your graves, I'll awaken your spiritual dead consciousness and cause you to become spiritually conscious out of your spiritual death and bring you into the promised land of Israel, which is the land of Lewis, which is North Carolina, South Carolina, Georgia, and Florida. It's going to be your land when all the judgment has been done to get the Japhetites to cleanse themselves out of the land that they shouldn't be in. The most high chosen people, along with others, will occupy the promised land area. That's those four states. Jump to Matthew 27, verse 52. And the graves, the spiritual dead, were awakened, the graves were open. That's what it means. And many bodies of the saints, the saints are the righteous, the elects, the chosen, the people now that are cleaving on to their righteousness, to all the energy that's now being given to us by the sun, which is transforming us from all those dark stuff that we used to do, all those negative things, to a positive lifestyle. The saints which slept now arose. They're now becoming spiritually conscious. This is what this is telling you. The dead. Who is in a grave? Dead people. Those dead people, their graves are open up and their bodies now are coming up. They're becoming spiritually conscious. And they're going to take over this planet. The planet will be ruled by the spiritual conscious people, no longer by the spiritually dead and the spiritually lacking people, the ones that don't have any spirituality at all. Whether they try to have it, they cannot because they're not meant, they're not positioned themselves to be spiritually inclined. You might ask yourself, why all this persecution of Shem, why all this deception around Shem, why keep Shem in a position that he's spiritually dead and lacking of understanding? 
and I want to help you get questions to things that are happening around you because you are Shem. If you're listening to this message and it's resonating with you, you are Shem. So we'll go back to Dr. Doriel's books, The Messiah Agadoth, and another book, it's called Melchizedek. We have covered Messiah Agadoth, where we have identified the Jewish people, that they're dark-skinned, dark-haired, dark-eyed people of the brown race, which are you now, black people, in America, North America, Central America, some in South America, and in the Caribbean as well. They're of the Jewish race. Now, here's the reason why the major persecution and deception of the Jewish race is that another race has been given your identity. They're called the Ashkenazi Jews, which are the white Jews now that you see in your modern day society that are identifying themselves as Jews. They're Ashkenazi Jews. They don't fit the description of dark skin, dark hair. And if you go back to the races of Europe, you'll see that they don't fit the English Jew or the Sephardic Jew, which are both dark-skinned people. They don't fit that. They were invented to take the identity of the true and real dark-skinned Jewish people. I don't want to spend too much time on that, but it's important that you know who you are. Now, here's the reason why. If you look to the right of the screen from this book, Melchizedek, by Dr. Doriel, you'll see that Melchizedek found a unique characteristic in the Jewish people, the dark-skinned Jew. They had unusual memory, the ability to remember anything told to them without changing one word of it. So Melchizedek, who is thought the ruler, the person who had brought intelligence of the Egyptian culture, that's Melchizedek. Other name known for Melchizedek is Thoth. That's why I keep using the Lord Thoth that's in the Bible that, again, was taken out to remove your connection that you have with Thoth. But Thoth, Melchizedek, taught the Jewish, the black people, what they know now as the Kabbalah. That knowledge was taken away from you, but it's still buried in your DNA. It's within you. Once you start reading it, it will resonate with you because it's in your DNA. Thoth was the inventor, the originator of the Hebrew alphabet. He was the one who taught that to the Egyptian, and they wrote all their books in Hebrew. The Hebrew Bible, the Torah, that's the first five book of the Bible, that's called the Torah. It's written in the ancient Hebrewic language that was taught to the Egyptian by Thoth, a.k.a. Melchizedek. Now, here is the punchline. Melchizedek had chosen the Jewish people, the black people are the chosen people of the Lord. So when you're reading in the Bible, hear my chosen people, my people, and all that different language. You're talking about you, black, dark-skinned Jewish people at this time, not the Jews that were invented to retake your identity. And the Jewish people are to be the custodian of certain knowledge, the knowledge of of creation, the knowledge of Kabbalah, the knowledge of spirit that is to be taught at the time of Aquarius. So you have the knowledge within you. It's in your DNA. You just have to activate that knowledge, seek knowledge, seek wisdom, and the information will come to you so you can get understanding. So that's why you were dumbed down. You were made dead to remove that connection of that knowledge that you have within you that the thought the Lord had given you, had taught you. You have the Kabbalah in you. The Kabbalah is the creation, how to create using spirituality as above, and you can bring that down to the third dimension and create the same thing that was created in the heavens. 
That's what was taken away from you so you wouldn't be able to create all the things that you can create spiritually in a higher dimension, fourth, fifth, sixth, and so on dimension, and bring it down and create it in the third dimension. People, dark skinned people, black people, Jewish people, Shems, you are spiritual creators. It's just being taken from you and everything has been done to prevent you from coming into who you are. So listen to this message. Hopefully it resonates with you and you can come into who you truly are. The Shemites, the Adamites, the Jew, and be the person who you are that have that unmistakable, unusual memory, and you're able to remember and know all the things that you need to know. Awaken your DNA and move yourself out of the dead state that those who don't want you to come into who you are have put you into. Brings me to this last question. It's a rhetorical question. Just asking you, but you already know the answer. Are you a descendant of the race of people that was and is spiritually dead, wandering without understanding of who they are, and thirdly, was and is, is involuntary, and then voluntary captivity, bondage, and affliction. If you are a descendant of slaves, a descendant of slavery, then all three of these apply to you. And if all three apply to you, yes, you are Shem, without a doubt. And as I told you, Shem shall be risen out of the grave, out of the dead state, and be revived given back consciousness, spiritual consciousness, given back knowledge of self, wisdom and understanding of spiritual things, and will go on to rule this country, this world, this planet, and have eternal life, it can be on other star system galaxies and other planets. With that said, I'm going to bring this one to an end. And as always, stand strong, be strong, and stay strong. The time, your time, is at end. Your time is now.